Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is Dan over at Anglegeist. I am uh, doing a collaboration with Dr. Mystical Tarot. This is the winter to spring sort of predictive pick a card. Um, sort of, if you go to Dr. Mystical's page at Dr. Mystical Tarot on YouTube, he has um, three cards pulled out in three separate piles. Uh, his What he's uh, showing you is what has been laid to rest from the winter, what energy from this uh, sort of will continue, and then what um, early growth might you find. And then you would come over here and watch mine. I mean, you can watch them either way. You can go back and forth. You can either start here and then go over to Dr. Mystical's page and watch his uh, forecast, or you can uh, start with his forecast and come back to mine. Uh, what I'm telling you is more the spring side of things. He, he's handling more of the winter side of things, right? The cycle that we've just gone through, and I'm handling the cycle that we're heading into. So what I have in my three cards, you'll see is um, uh, how you can nurture this growth, which will be the first card, the smallest card here. Then we have what will be the signs of this growth, which is the next card. And then the third card is going to be what will thrive for me during this spring. Um, what the way that I've chosen to do this, Dr. Mystical, if you go over and look at his site and the way that he's got it set up, he's amazing. He has really brilliant um, uh, cards and uh, listings of the card decks that he uses. All of my stuff, I'm not quite there yet. You know me, I'm not super tech savvy. I'm kind of, my head's in the clouds being uh, the type of person that I am. So I will have all of my decks listed and Dr. Mystical's tar uh, Tarot's um, uh, link in the uh, video, descri video description below. So if you pull down on that menu, you can see what um, uh, uh, cards and decks that I've used and also the link directly to his site to find his um, video that corresponds with this video. But check him out, he's super professional. Like the way that he does his videos is kind of, it's amazing to me. Um, like he has pictures of the decks and stuff. He's, he's really pulled together. Like he makes, <laughs> he kind of intimidates me. No, it's really sweet and it's nice of him that he, invited me to do this. This was his idea. And I said, sure, why not? It sounds like a lot of fun. So we're going to see sort of what's going on for us, not only in this past winter, but what is happening for us in this coming spring. The way that I've separated these three uh, piles is by roses, because to me, roses are deeply spiritual symbols. They're also, you know, a sign of spring is the flowers that come. And this way, it sort of wasn't too I wanted the um, symbols to sort of be very, be very similar. So as you can see, we have group one here, which is an orange rose. We have group two, which is a white rose, and group three, which is a yellow rose. Now, if you wanna pause the video for a moment and take a breath and see sort of where your energy is drawn towards which pile, that is going to um, help you to decide, you know, which pile you want. Please go ahead and do so, and then when you are ready, um, uh, start the video back up. Hopefully I will put timestamps in the video description so that those of you that choose say pile number two or three, you can um, go directly to that pile and get your information. Okay, but I am gonna now start with pile one and I'm gonna sort of move everybody off of the stage. I don't have a lot of room on my desk, but this was the best way that I could do this. I mean, shit, we're in a pandemic, right? So you guys will make do. All right, so let me move pile two over. And then we will bring over pile three. Get it, pile three. And let's start with pile one, which is the orange rose. Now you'll see that this is where I do my daily forecast. I have sort of um, kind of redecorated with a little bit of some flowers for the spring and I can move this in closer now. So those of you chose the orange rose. So let's just add that in there for a little bit of color. And let's see. So your first card represents sort of um, how you can nurture this growth that you're sort of seeking out during this spring. And this is from the White Sage Tarot. This is a deck that I really love. This is the Eight of Cups. Okay. Now, the Eight of Cups to me, eights are always about balance. And it does feel like sort of there is this opportunity when I look at this card, there is this opportunity to kind of... Um, 
get our ducks in a row, so to speak, or our cups stacked up, right? I mean, I like that they're, all of these cups are sort of stacked up in a row. Uh, to me, eights are always about getting things back into balance, back into the swing of things before, um, you know, uh, through the changes of the sixes and sevens, we get into the eights, which is to me about sort of feeling like we have some sort of control. I am gonna say this though, this spilling cup here to me does feel like it's not going to be sort of the easiest um, nurturing. We are gonna have a lot of free time, obviously sort of with what's going on in April and quite possibly into May. We are gonna have a lot of free time to sort of organize our thoughts, our feelings, and especially this being a cups card, our emotions around uh, whatever this growth is that we want to sort of bring into spring. Is it gonna always be easy? I kind of get a feeling, not necessarily because this one cup is falling, but what we need to remember is that we are only human and that we do have a lot of other cups still working in our favor, still like balanced, still sort of, um, uh, uh, how do I want to put this? Like working for us. So keep that in mind if things kind of go a little bit off track or if they feel like maybe there's days where you have some emotions and there's a little bit of overspill, that's okay. You're allowed that. That's also sort of, to me, what the the uh, sort of the mental image picture that I'm getting to is sometimes we need to have those moments where we sort of spill over a little bit and um, allow for that steam to be blown off so that we can keep our focus and keep this balance in place. I, I don't feel like this cup is necessarily gonna break per se or fall apart, but I do feel that there is this sort of moments where we are going to work really hard at getting things sort of feeling manageable and organized. And then uh, there might be that odd moment out where we get a little bit overly emotional. Keep an eye out for that would be my suggestion. And don't judge yourself. Don't um, uh, uh, ridicule yourself or make yourself feel bad for having experienced that because this is a, a a time of creation. Spring is always a time of creation and creations aren't always necessarily smooth. I mean, you can look at the sort of chaos of nature and see that, um, you know, sometimes things don't always work out as planned, but allow for those um, small, like sort of pleasant or happy mistakes to happen is how I would want to put this. I do feel like this pink ribbon across the bottom, this is part of the reason why I love this deck is there's this uh, visual ribbon that goes through the different suits. And this pink ribbon to me feels like this is definitely a space that's based in healing for us in the beginning of the spring. And there's a, there's a stability that comes from the stacking of these cups and the organizing of, say, our emotions. Not to say that our emotions are always going to stay organized. At times, we are going to feel them. They are going to overflow. But that's okay. We were allowed that. And we are are based in this firm foundation of this sort of healing that's going on and that is really the growth that we want to sort of um, nurture this spring. Now the next card represents what will be the signs of this growth for us. So this is from the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck and I kind of chose these because I wanted um, these sort of spring colors too. They're all done in pastels. Um, and I, I sort of felt like these were suitable for spring, these decks working together. Now, the Seven of Wands is about spiritual work to me. Wands always represents the spirit. Sevens kind of represent like revision, uh, kind of going back over, reassessing everything. Where are we at? With this balancing of our emotions in the uh, early part of spring or throughout the spring and feeling sort of based in this place of healing, that is going to trigger this space where we want to sort of grow spiritually. And this will be a sign of that. This will be, some of these emotions might be that very spiritual growth that we're experiencing, right? These emotions that come up, they're going to touch us, uh, I believe, put us in a place where we're in touch with our more spiritual desires, our more spiritual work, uh, more uh, stronger spiritual focus. Uh, some of us through spring might feel, when I'm looking at these clouds here, we may not feel, feel as though we see the full picture, but I do feel like the hard work is being placed, the work is being um, uh, done, and um, that we're putting in our best effort at a very deep and powerful level. Wands energy is always the element of fire, so there's a dynamism to it. I do feel like um, 
when I look at this uh, this card coupled with this card, it feels like we might feel at times sort of blocked, maybe by our environment, what's going on in the world, but we're not letting that stop us. We're not letting, this group is not letting that stop the, like, the work, uh, both emotionally and spiritually, that you guys are putting in to nurture this sort of, um, this personal growth, uh, really is what this feels like. This feels like, with it, it being an emotional card, the cups and then the spiritual card of the wands and him working so hard not letting sort of the clouded nature of like the environment get in his way he can continues to sort of work with a um a determination right as we continue to do that i think that this is about personal growth for you guys this is about um understanding and feeling sort of um empowered and organized, steady, in charge, in control. Control is a funny word for me. I don't necessarily know that we want to seek control always, but I feel like this group might need to do that for um, to feel uh, productive in this time that we're in right now. Now, this last card for you guys is what will thrive for you this spring. And this is from the English Magic Tarot. And I, the reason why I chose this deck was because I thought about thriving in magic. And I wanted to uh, hopefully connect those two, like, because I do believe that we do need a certain amount of uh, personal magic going on right now during this time. So that's why I chose this as the third deck. And I do feel like with this group, you guys are working very hard emotionally and spiritually to kind of create that magic. So let's see what you are trying to create. So you guys have the Ace of Wands, beautiful. So I love this. This is a little bit more emboldened or darker in color, uh, the art style of this. But to me, this is all about sort of the hard work of the spirit, inspiration, new beginnings with the spirit, new relation to the spirit, um, maybe new relations and relating to others in the spirit. And part of the reason why I feel that is if you look at this, let me just show you this design up close. If you look at all of those hands wrapped around that wand, right, it sort of feels like uh, people working together, maybe from a place of spirit that empowers us. And look at that. The Tiger King is present. We're all loving the Tiger King right now on Netflix are we not? So I think that this speaks to me. Sorry, I had to throw him in there. He's just fascinating. If you're not watching the Tiger King, watch it. It will take you right out of this damn pandemic. It could always be worse. You could be one of the cast of the Tiger King. Anyways, um, this to me is, speaks to this idea of feeling inspired at a deep spiritual level. And this is the, um, the sort of the goal or what's going to thrive for us through this hard work and this emotional sort of steadfastness of this like real um organization of our emotional feelings basing that in healing right over these next few months of spring and then really putting in the work even if we can't see sort of the future long-term results, the results that are going to come are going to be quite inspiring. They're going to actually hopefully potentially connect us to other people, not only from our own spirit, from this, from, from our spirit to theirs, right? And, and I really like this card because I think that this is actually what we need on this planet. I love that this card ends in a fire symbol and we have a lot of fiery dynamic energy playing between these two wands. And you guys chose the orange rose, which to me, when I was thinking about it, signified that more of uh, this idea of energy or um, uh, uh, dynamism, right? Which I definitely feel is part of the fire element in the wand suit. So don't like, how do I want to say this? Uh, work hard towards your goals, even if you feel as though your goals might be a little bit strapped in. That might be the stacking of this cups, right? That might be the energy of this sort of self-distancing, not feeling like we can maybe relate to others or connect with others in the way that we would like to sort of see fit or, or are used to experiencing. The work may be done on our own where we can't clearly see the results of our work, but I think by the end of spring, we're going to either find new inspired ways of relating and connecting to people from the realm of spirit but we're also going to be like have this strength of this sort of tiger we're going to be emboldened and inspired and maybe even the opportunity to inspire others uh through this sort of work i love the um sort of the impassioned color of this red that uh we are fulfilling it's sort of that um to me, it takes me to this place of like sort of, you know, the root chakra and um, strength, empowerment, 
um, and inspiration. So that is what I believe that you guys will be working on as far as what you're trying to grow for yourself um, throughout the months of spring. I hope that you guys find this for yourself. Please leave me a comment or a share and let me know if this resonates at all with my group ones. Uh, please go over and check out Dr. Mystical's page and see what pile you pick with him. Do these two connect? I have yet to watch his video. Um, only just to gather what his questions were, what he was trying to answer so that I was clear with you guys. But I haven't watched his actual piles yet to know. I'm doing this sort of blind, so I hope they coincide and fit well. Um, but this is my group one. I bless you all, and I wish you guys a wonderful spring full of prosperity and um, enjoyment. Okay, I'm going to now move on to group two. Okay, now we're at group two. In group two, you guys chose the white rose, right? So I'm gonna just place this here. I've left group one's orange rose here because I think that it's the beauty of the building of the flowers of spring, right? The power of spring and the beauty of spring. Now this first card I've chosen from three different decks. Please make sure to go over and check out Dr. Mystical's page um, for uh, his insights into what's going on for you guys, what's passed in this just in this winter cycle. But this is now, this first card is from the White Sage Tarot, and this is about how you can nurture this growth. So let's see what we're doing for the growth of spring. What are we trying to nurture here? Ah, the King of Swords, mental energy. I like this. This, is, this speaks to my, I mean, first off, I want to say my Geminis or um, Aquarians, um, and my Libras, right? Or that sort of energy of that. This is about being in control of our thoughts. Uh, this is about sort of really understanding, having spent some time maybe uh, taking into account how our brain works, where our thoughts are at, what we want in life, and what, how we sort of want to go about getting there. The king has that sort of authority. There's a sort of decisive decision making that comes with the court cards of the wand sign to me that I think is... Um, uh, very strong and powerful, right? When I look at this, I think it's a leopard or a jaguar, but to me, he's taking no guff. I mean, you can see it on his face. He really looks like he's in control. He's not maybe happy with the situation, <laughs> but he's dealing with it with the sort of aplomb and skill of a king, right? There's an awareness that this group has that you guys have built over or that you will be building over the course of spring and trying to nurture that is going to be empowering intellectually and mentally. Um, I think that you guys are going to sort of command and deserve respect or that's something that you're trying to nurture growth around. And I think maybe some of this time spent alone or in introspection is going to help to harbor this, to help to grow this, to sort of create this um, empowered feeling of authority where you know what's best for you you know how to go about getting it and when the time is right you will be ready to make those decisive decisions and actions similar to like the leopard you know how there's sort of these stealthy hunters to me you're being like a sort of stealthy hunter you may not be ready to move right away in spring right I do get this feeling that he's sort of holding back hence his sword being drawn back here he is sort of holding back and taking it all in but I do feel like there's a control or a, um, a strength here mentally that uh, I really like. And I think that that is what you guys are um, uh, utilizing to sort of nurture this growth that you desire in the month, uh, in, the, in the spring months, right? Is the power of your mind, the power of your intellect, keeping your thoughts clean and clear, logical, balanced, and um, when you're ready to sort of strike or make a move and you're allowed to, you will, okay? Your next card is coming from the Ethereal Visions to Illuminated Tarot deck. And this is what will be the signs of this growth. So these are things we want to watch out for in the month of spring to see, wow, so the Two of Cups. So to me, this speaks to emotional bonding, maybe with others, ideas. Um, it might be also emotional and bonding to yourself. I love that we have these two big cats here, like right out of the gate. That attracts my attention right out of the gate. And we have this, um, I believe this is called the catechist, which is the symbol of the two snakes around the uh, winged bird. Uh, what do you call it? 
can't think of it. I think it's called a catechist, right? And it's a symbol of healing, right? And so to me, when I look at this two of cups, this might be us, this group, healing themselves emotionally, their relationship to themselves, or maybe to a significant other that allows them and enables them to sort of also have this strength of purpose in mind. There's also a clarity here with these two cups where I feel like we've kind of shook away a lot of the emotional um, uh, upheaval or worry. And we've gotten very clear in this group, your I feel like your goal or what you're trying to nurture and what the signs of this growth will be is about this clarity of emotion, this healing of one's emotional self so that you can have a clear mind and be ready to sort of make clear and decisive decisions when the time is right. The interesting thing is I keep saying clear, clarity, blah, 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 but the, the, um, the rose that you guys picked was white, which to me would also be a symbol of clarity or purity. And I feel like with this uh, two of cups, this is about, this could be relationships with others, connecting with others in very deep emotional ways that aren't like necessarily, I'm not getting a messy feeling from this card at all. I'm getting a very sort of grounded healing vibe from this card. So if we're not ne if we're not necessarily healing and connecting with others around us, we're healing and connecting with ourselves at such an emotional level that I feel like it's this clear-minded thinking of the King of Swords that is enabling that emotional sort of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess growth to come about. And, and it empowers us even more so at the level of this, you know, this large cat thing. <laughs> I don't want to bring up the Tiger King. I brought him up again in the first reading, but I'm kind of obsessed, guys. Anyways, so we've got uh, some empowered sort of king of the jungle kind of energy going on in the spring. I wouldn't be surprised if this group is feeling very clear. I do feel like you guys are a little bit limited in what you can do. So... Because I, I, I even feel that with this card, even though we have these beautiful two cups and it's this sort of joining together, it could be the signifier of love, that sort of a thing. But I feel like this is more about a depth of connection with sort of either friendships, family members, or ourselves that's really important right now that we need to sort of empower ourselves going through spring. Now, this um, last card is what will thrive for me this spring. And this is from the English Magic Tarot. And I utilized this deck because I thought about the idea of thriving and magic kind of, we want magic to thrive right now on this planet as far as I'm concerned. So, let's see. We've got the Queen of Swords. Interesting. So, when I look at this, this is definitely about mental prowess. This is but definitely this group are the ones that are going to be the strong mental folks, the clear minded um, decision makers, the ones that are sort of cutting away the detrius and making room for whatever it is that when it's time, you will be re ready to create it, if that makes sense. You will be ready to make, like the mental plans are put in place here, and then like the sort of, uh, the what's thriving is this idea of this sort of compassionate, um, thought-based pondering let me just say this for one minute. I still feel like you guys are not going to be able to make a move, though. Why is that? There's something about these cards. Her being seated also makes me feel like we're not quite able to move forward by the end of spring in this group. We have clear ideas of where we want to go, but for some reason we're being held back or we're not quite sure yet how to move and when to move. This is trying to peg this. Because this is a lot of swords energy, right? The last reading had a lot of wands energy, which was the spirit. This group, you guys are nurturing your minds. You're trying to get your minds clear. And it looks like you are getting your minds clear. But for some reason, you're not able to sort of 
Um, and this is why this two of cups is why you guys are able to be so in the realm of the mind without freaking out, right? There's a balance. We have this masculine and feminine balance between the king and the queen. And so I feel like there is that balance present in those two cards too. So I feel like there is this balance going on for you guys. There's also a balance in this two of cups, right? You guys have worked hard or maybe back in winter, you did work on the emotions and got that all out of the way. So when you got yourself to this spring and the situations we're dealing with in this spring, you're like actually mentally ready to sort of handle this stuff. But it's like the thoughts or where you guys want to go with your thoughts, um, your ideas, your creations, I feel like there is a pause being placed on them. Um, so don't get frustrated by that. That might be the sort of frustration I see in this, um, uh, in this king's face, in this leopard's face, I do feel like she is sort of laughing at things. Uh, she is sort of, you know, pondering things, maybe finding a sense of humor around what is going on in the world or what it is you might be facing or dealing with. But I do feel like this group is sort of still stuck in the house with that queen of swords. I don't want to predict that far into the future with that, but... I'm not so sure where this is going, but I get this sense that for you guys, it might be hard to feel um, uh, that limitation when you're so ready mentally to sort of move forward. Okay, so keep that in mind as you move forward through spring. Your ideas are clean and clear and ready to go. It's just a matter of waiting for when they're allowed to be kind of Unleashed is the feeling that I get. I hope that makes sense for you guys. And I hope that gives you guys some insight into where you need to be working on or what you need to be working on. It feels like you guys are very mentally clear and kind of ready or throughout the months of spring, you're going to get mentally clear and get really understanding of what it is you want. I just don't know if by springtime end, you'll actually be able to execute those mental, those intellectual plans that you have in place for yourself. And that's no like pandemic prediction, I feel like, but um, it does feel like you might feel limited in what you can actually execute by the end of spring, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense. I am going to move on to group three, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please check out Dr. Mystical's um, Tarot channel and look at his readings on what um, you left behind in winter. And hopefully that might give you more insight into what this group's uh, meaning was all about. So this is for group three. Group three, you guys chose the yellow rose. So the first, um, I'm going to just take the yellow rose and add it to our springtime bloom here. Um, you guys, this first card is from the White Sage Tarot. This is how you can nurture the growth uh, that you're wanting or desiring this spring. So this is the Queen of Cups. Okay. So I like this. This is about... <laughs> I love the, uh, the court cards in this deck because they're all otters. I love that this is about taking care of oneself. This is about knowing how to take care of oneself. The reason why I say that the Queen of Cups is always sort of this loving emotional energy. She's always sort of a caretaker and, um, you know, like, I don't know, running around sort of making sure everybody else is okay before herself. But when I look at this, when I look at this otter, it feels to me like with that crown on, on the otter's head, to me it's about sort of putting ourselves first. I love that the otter's sort of waving from far away. <laughs> so that might be a form of sort of social distancing with this hand here, like, hi guys! But I feel like this group, what you guys need to be nurturing during this time in, in spring is this idea of relaxation, nurturing with this, this cup of tea here, and, and accessing your knowing through sort of maybe your emotional well-being and, and knowing that emotionally you are okay, that you have the power to sort of not only care for others, but also to care for yourself, that that's going to give you guys sort of that extra boost or that um, ease with which you're looking for so that you can naturally bring about sort of the growth that you seek in spring, right? And even if we're doing this by ourselves in some sem semblance, you know, in the, say, the months of April and May in self, um, 
confinement or whatever, this is going to bring about uh, sort of a peace within you, a relaxation within you, and an authenticity or a, a, an, an authority in a way, because it is a queen card, that you've maybe not been able to experience before. And I sort of like that about this. So keep in mind that during the spring months, nurture yourself, love yourself as if you would, you know, pretend that you are your most adored human on the planet, right? If you have children or you have family members that you love or a partner that you love, take some of that love that you would normally give to them and turn it in on yourself is the feeling that I get. And allow that to kind of nurture the growth that you want to see, not only throughout spring, but within yourself. And I think that that could be um, very beautiful for you. Now, this next card is what uh, uh, what will be the signs of this growth, right? So this is from the illuminated, the ethereal visions illuminated tarot. This is the nine of pentacles. So the nine of pentacles is also about sort of abundance and in figuring out, this is about earthly abundance, right? The pentacles being the element of earth, a little bit slower energy than the cups. But when I look at this, I feel like she's enjoying what she has. She's enjoying what she's got in the moment. There's this idea of looking at things through an eye of abundance versus an eye of lack. And for this group, when we're in this state of repose with this Queen of Cups, and we're looking at the world through this Nine of Pentacles, even if the world may not seem that way, if we're looking at our immediate world in that way, th that sort of, I think this is the sign that we're doing better. We're feeling better emotionally. We're able to appreciate and sort of let, um, you know, the rest of the world, I don't want to say go by per se, but like not focus on the negative and focus in on ourselves and our own self-care. And from that, we're able to sort of create a better, more abundant, immediate environment around us that actually sustains us, serves us, and, and um, pleases us at a very, um, you know, obvious material level, right? She's very much at peace. She, these, like when I look at these grapes, they're very abundant. There's enough to go around. She's not feeling any lack. She's not feeling any need or desire or worry. She's also, I noticed too, her head is down. There's this uh, castle in the background, right? Maybe this group is not necessarily paying so much attention to the outside world. Maybe this group is actually paying more attention to their internal world and the world that they're creating within themselves. And I think that because of that, it's freeing you guys up to see the benefit and um, enjoy uh, the emotional sort of stability and relaxation that you've created. Thus, in turn, allows us to enjoy the sort of material environment that we have around us, even if it may be small, or it might be, you know, uh, smaller than we're normally used to. I think this is a nice respite for this group or a nice opportunity to just kind of calm things down and appreciate our immediate present um, environment. Okay, now this last card is what will thrive for me this spring. And this is from the English Magic Tarot deck. And the reason why I chose this one is because I wanted, you know, magic to thrive for everybody this spring. I think that we all deserve a little bit of that. So let's see what this is. The Ace of Coins. Okay, so coins would be the same as pentacles up here in this nine. To me, this is about inspired thought around what we have in our world. Inspired thought or new beginnings in how we view the world, in where we find richness in our world. When I look at this Queen of Cups, right, she to me feels like she is finding richness within her own emotional self, within her own ease and tranquility, right? She's rolled over onto her back, gliding along, enjoying the, like this sort of warm cup of tea, like she's treating herself lovely, right? And because of that, she's able to start, start to see the signs of what is lovely and right in her world with this Nine of Cups. And as we start to look at that, or not Nine of Cups, sorry, Nine of Pentacles, as we start to look at that, those things, and we start to focus on those things and not on the, maybe say the bigger picture of what's going on out in the world, our spring begins to thrive with this idea or this energy, this inspiration of this new beginning around these Ace of Coins, right? Which would be the same as Ace of Pentacles, right? We start to see the richness in everything material. Uh, we start to see the abundance or where things are good. Even if we may not, you know, some of us might be dealing with financial struggles, but for this group, I feel like if you play your cards right, what's going to thrive for you is 
not you're not going to have that fear of financial insecurity thriving at all. This is about feeling secure materially, right? That that your needs are met. That whatever you're doing emotionally, um, you feel adept enough and aware enough that you can go about creating exactly what it is you need and then some even you might even be able to share a little bit of um your sort of uh not only emotional abundance but uh actual material abundance with others or share your attitudes towards things which helps to positively affect those around you so that they can find their connection to their own abundance and what is working. Because right now, I think this is a time or a, a season where that's what we want to be focused on more so than the lack or what's not working, because that will just send us down a path that is not as um, uh, beautiful as these three cards represent to be honest, right? So I hope that makes sense for you guys. Please go and uh, check out Dr. Mystical Tarot's um, uh, pick a card that is in conjunction with this. I will link it in the description box below. Um, please leave me any comments if it does make sense or if it doesn't and you have a question, you can also do that. Um, again, thank you to Dr. Mystical Tarot for in uh, inviting me to do this. I hope you guys have an awesome spring, no matter you know what you're experiencing. Please um, let me know how it's going for you guys. Uh, hit the like, share, uh, or hit the <laughs> subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I do go live. Um, you can also like my business, my Facebook business page. All my social media stuff is on the um, YouTube page, on the YouTube channel page. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys soon. All right. Have a wonderful spring, you guys. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye.